So hi and welcome to this week's vlog. As you know with current circumstances, the fact we're in lockdown, it's impossible for myself and many other photographers to get out on location and do the street photography and the landscape photography that we love. So we're all having to adapt and to innovate and to try new things to keep our creative juices flowing and to keep our photography flowing and to give you guys content. So this week, I've, or over the past few weeks actually, I've been turning my attention to doing some bird photography in my back garden. Now, as you may know, my good friend Darren Knight's been doing a series on bird photography and he's really inspired me to get out there and have a go myself. And his stuff's absolutely fantastic. He's a very talented photographer. He's also a very talented uh, carpenter. So it's easy for him to knock up a hide and he's got the garden, a garden the size of a national park as well, which helps. Um, so mine's not quite that big and I'm the worst gardener in the world, probably, if you look at all my, uh, all my bits and pieces prior to... Uh, lockdown my garden was in an absolute state so it took a little bit of tidying up to get going and then the next thing that I needed to do really was try and work out how to get those birds into the garden in the first place so I set about uh, chopping down a, a tree uh, to make a perch <laughs> So with what I thought was the hardest part of the exercise done, which was actually sawing down the tree branch, all that was left to do was just to drill a few holes in it, fill them up with seed and hang a feeder off it and then just sit and wait for the birds to come in. Surely within a matter of hours, they'd be flocking to my feeder and sitting on those perches. Now we sit and wait, bud. What do you think? Plan? You up for that? Okay.
so two days had gone past and there was not a, a sight or sound of a bird anywhere near the garden and I was kind of expecting that to be honest it is a slow process plus it's you know nesting season for the birds and the, the food is probably plentiful in other areas so they weren't going to come to you know specifically hunt out my sunflower seeds which was all I had at that point in time um, so I wasn't getting too distressed um, that there was no sign of birds but by day three I did start to see some uh, some bird life although it was not the sort I was really hoping for. So it's been four days now with nothing, nothing at all on the bird feeder. Uh, now, I've had a few pigeons, but that's about it. Now, I know they used to come and feed in that corner on that horrible old bird feeder there. So I'm wondering if I maybe chop down another tree branch and set it up over there with some feeders. I might be able to encourage them to come a bit further back and then maybe they might jump from there onto the other one so I think we're going to have a look at doing that and just uh, at least get some birds into the garden even if they might not be in the best place for me to take pictures. So after that hard-earned drink and, uh, and a pot noodle, which you didn't see, but it was hiding just behind the bottle of beer, um, I just had decided that I was going to chill out for the rest of the afternoon and just relax. But I will admit that um, I was starting to wonder if I'd ever get any birds into the garden. And that was my desire to get them just, just coming to the garden was taking over from the actual desire to get photographs of them at this point. So it's about day five or six now and I don't think there's been any interest at all so far on this uh, feeder because looking at where I've uh, poked in the, the suet balls into the uh, drill holes there's very little there's one possibly there's possibly one little peck up here um, but nothing really of any interest I don't think they've been at all on the feeder today's job after sawing down the tree yesterday is to go and basically uh, put this um, this big branch up here and hopefully if I can get that up I can maybe move this main one here this little one back a bit and try and get them to jump from the main branch which will be closer to the big trees onto this one and then maybe slowly move it closer back into position for photography but this is turning into a long process <laughs>
So there's a, I was just watching something in, in, in my uh, living room on a telly. I just looked out the corner of my eye through the conservatory and through to the, to the garden. And I saw a little, little flash of something going on. So I had a quick look and there was a... green finches feeding and there was also uh, one of them flew up and sat on the perch a couple of times and there was also a blue tip that came along and sat on one of the perches so absolute result I think I got the green finches I couldn't really get a very good uh, video of them because uh, I couldn't get close enough with the GoPro and I didn't have the camera set up at the time so but the great news is is that they're actually using the perches when feeding which is fantastic um, it's a bit noisy out there now because the neighbours are in the next door garden so I don't think I might see many for a little while but it means now that if I get up early in the morning hopefully I might get some shots. You'll have to forgive the mess. This is the conservatory which is the room we never really use. And this is what I've set up as well apart from the little guinea pigs that we've got in here. And this is the room that we've set up that I've set up here as sort of a, a hide. Um, I've got my camera sat here I'm behind a green screen with a hole cut out of it looking out of directly out of the open door to the conservatory uh, out towards the, the perches um, it's about 7 30 in the morning and I think this is the best time really probably could have done up done with getting up a little bit earlier this is about the best time really to um, to get anything done because there's no noise around the neighbors are all in bed still so and i think this is probably when the birds are going to feed i popped out and uh one of the holes has been got at and the other one had completely been used all the all the fat ball or all the all the suet had completely gone out of it which is really good news which means that the birds are definitely using the perches as i saw a couple yesterday in all honesty the perches are too far away really for the 200 mil um cam uh, lens um but you know you have to sort of deal with what you've got uh i've got my 700d battery charging so that'll give me an extra sort of 50 percent reach when i get that back on so it's not too bad um but at the moment i just want to see a couple of birds really that's that's really what i'm what i'm waiting for yesterday even though they came yesterday i sort of just left it i didn't get involved i didn't try and take any photos or anything i just took a quick video but today i, I definitely want to get some video of them uh, for this vlog um and hopefully maybe a couple of photos as well so fingers crossed just a blue tit landed but I didn't I don't think I got much of it on video <laughs> I'm just glad I got it at all not pigeons now that's a good start I mean that's it's good that at least they're coming a little bit and that one it fed on the seed feeder then it jumped down to the fat balls and then it actually went and sat on the top perch which is exactly where I want them on that very pointy bit so that bodes really well 
I just need to uh, keep them enticed and keep them coming in. And then maybe see about moving that feeder forward, all those perches, the lower perches forward, see if I can get them into a better field of view for the camera. Now about day 11 and the birds are pretty abundant now on the feeders and on the perches which is fantastic um, i've made some changes to the perches i've added some food um, i've added mealworms which is just attracts so many starlings and sparrows which is great um, and some robins who like to seem to like to feed off the floor um, get blue tits on here and now i'm getting green finches I'm getting sparrows uh, I'm getting yeah lots of different garden birds so I've added some mealworms. I've got a new fat ball feeder and I've separated the fat balls out from the um, suet. So I've got a separate feeder for the suet and I've also got the, the seed feeder. So um, yeah, the, the birds are, uh, are really coming um, and it's fantastic. And uh, the good news is, is I can take advantage of them coming as well because I've managed to get hold of this uh, uh, 150 to 600 mil lens on a, on a really good deal. So. Uh, I've had this lens before and it's an absolute beast but it's fantastic um, for, for this type of photography. It's really sharp and yeah, it's, it's made a whole difference so I'm really happy. Patience has paid off um, and yeah, now I'm just, I mean, I'm just sitting here talking and there's starlings on the feeders already now so uh, yeah and the sun's out today so it should be a good day for a bit of photography. Um, they're coming on the perches, it's just, everything's just spot on. Um, yeah, so my patience has absolutely paid off and uh, I'm really chuffed. Mm -hmm. 